Hello, and this is part six of topic two on atomic bonding. The last type of bond we're going to look at is the secondary bond. There's a group of bonds that fall into the category of secondary bonds, and they include hydrogen bonding, dipoles, and van der Waals forces. Hydrogen bonding is probably most familiar to you, as you probably covered it in chemistry class. A good example of hydrogen bonding is water. The water molecule consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Because of the covalent bonding and the bond directionality associated with covalent bonding, a hydrogen molecule, or excuse me, a water molecule consists of a negative charge on one side of the molecule and two positive charges on the other side of the molecule. The result then is that this water molecule will be attracted to the the negative portion will be attracted to the positive portion of another water molecule. For this reason, water boils at a very low temperature because it's easy to break these secondary bonds. But on the other hand, if these secondary bonds didn't exist at all, then water would boil off of our Earth long, long ago and we wouldn't exist. Another good example of a secondary bond is something called the van der Waals bond, or VWs. VWs are very weak bonds, much weaker than even hydrogen bonds, and because of this they can be easily stretched and even broken along the chains of molecules, allowing the molecules to slide past each other very easily. This is why polymers are so flexible and ductile. Polymers are made up of long chains of molecules, so for example, or of atoms. So for example, here's a long chain of carbon atoms with small hydrogen atoms and small chlorine or larger chlorine atoms sticking off the sides. The hydrogen atoms have a positive charge on them, and the chlorine atoms have a negative charge on them. These two charges are attracted to each other, creating the weaker van der Waals bond between the two molecules. It's easy to stretch these bonds, which makes means that molecules made out of long chains like this have low elastic moduli. This is an example of polyvinyl chloride. So it's important to think about where elastic deformation comes from in polymers. It occurs by the stretching of weak van der Waals bonds, not breaking those bonds and sliding the chains past each other. That would be plastic or permanent deformation. So elastic deformation is only caused by stretching the weak van der Waals bonds. Now you might ask yourself, well, why are rubber bands so rubbery? Why can I stretch them so far and return them elastically? And that has to do with a special kind of bond called a crosslink. A crosslink is where we have covalent bonds that connect one long polymer chain to another long polymer chain. So you can see in this picture little linkages between the long chains here and here and here's another one down here. As I apply a stress to this mo these molecules, the molecules line themselves up with the direction of the stress, but the crosslinks prevent the chains from sliding past one another. Therefore, I can stretch rubber band long distances without it snapping, but then once I get to the point where I'm pulling on the crosslinks, it becomes very difficult to continue stretching that material. This is why polymer chains can't slide past each other and makes rubbers very brittle, believe it or not. They're very elastic, but not very ductile. That concludes part five, part six, excuse me, of